số 2 này chúng ta sẽ học về à, cuộc à, cách mạng à, công nghiệp à, The Industrial Revolution Thì à, trước khi các bạn học về cái này thì các bạn cũng phải hiểu được à, cuộc cách mạng công nghiệp là cái gì à, Các bạn hiểu được cái nghĩa trước Xong rồi sau đó các bạn cũng sẽ được cái những cái hành tựu tiêu biểu của cuộc cách mạng công nghiệp À, và chúng ta cũng có nêu được cái tác động quan trọng nhất của các mạng công nghiệp đối với kinh tế và đối với xã xã hội đúng không rồi à, rồi à, ở đây thầy giảng sơ lược về cái à, định nghĩa các mạng công nghiệp các bạn à, các bạn nghe thôi nha rồi các bạn đi à, các mạng công nghiệp là sự chuyển biến chuyển biến từ lao động bằng chân tay bằng chân tay sang lao động rồi sang sang lao động bằng máy 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 móc à, chính là à, cái cuộc à, cách mạng công công nghiệp rồi sơ vậy rồi rồi trước khi các bạn hiểu được cái định nghĩa này các bạn sẽ bắt đầu vào phần hành động vào hành động rồi các bạn xem ở cái thông báo đầu này rồi, các bạn bức ảnh thời gian ghi lại từ last go last go last go này chứ rồi sẽ cho hình last go tới hình đô thì các bạn thấy được sự thay đổi nhanh chóng của phương tiện giao thông khi con người dùng móc tức là sao ạ à? tức là nhờ có tiện không mà cái việc đi lại đúng không ạ việc đi lại trở nên thuận tiện hơn và đó cũng chính là một cái minh chứng tiến bộ cho sự tiến bộ của nhân loại tức là nó giúp cho cái việc à, đi lại được thuận tiện hơn và nó cũng giúp cho cái cái gì không cái thời gian được rút ngắn hơn đây chưa thời gian được rút rút ngắn hơn phải chưa à, lúc đầu mình đi tới mười mấy ngày nhưng mà về sau mình đi khi mà bắt còn con còn hoặc mấy tiếng hồi nó cũng chỉ là cái minh chứng mà những à, sự tiến bộ của nhân loại nhờ bàn quả của các mạng công công nghiệp rồi bây giờ cái định nghĩa của của, của các mạng công nghiệp thì hồi nãy đã có hướng dẫn à, à, nhưng mà trước ở bài này chúng ta sẽ chỉ cũng tìm hiểu được về những thành tựu tiêu biểu của các mạng công nghiệp những thành tựu đó thành tựu thôi rồi bây giờ chúng ta chỉ là cái thành tựu trước nhất đó chính là thành tựu về thành tựu về kỹ thuật dệt kỹ thuật dệt dệt vải dệt vải dệt vải dệt vải của chúng ta được kê ha rồi chúng ta xem ha rồi thành tựu tiêu biểu đúng không thành tựu tiêu biểu rồi trước tiên là trong lĩnh vực dệt công nghiệp dệt thì năm 1364 James Hart River James Hart River đã chế tạo máy kéo sợi Cheney mà cái sợi này cái công suất của nó nó tăng lên tới mấy lần rồi đây cái máy sợi Cheney Cheney nó kéo tới 18 tám sáu công suất làm cho năng suất tăng lên gấp mười gấp mười tám lần rồi sau đó thì một người tên là một cái sư tên là các loài các bừng các loài trong máy chậm tám lần đã chế tạo ra chiếc máy giặt đầu tiên à, năm 1980 85 với năng suất tăng lên gấp bao nhiêu lần so với cái máy kéo sợi Sen Seni bây giờ đó là rồi rồi một cuối cùng là Jim Watt Jim Watt Jim Watt đã chế tạo ra máy hơi nước hay gọi hay gọi là động cơ hơi nước ở đây mình sẽ nói máy hơi nước rồi à và năm 1984 thì hoàn thiện ở đây nó cũng chuyên sát đâu và được dùng rất nhiều ở trong các công xưởng đây đây là trên quá trên quá rồi các bạn có thể đọc thêm đây Quack. Right. Oh. 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 Oh.
Thomas Newcomen had created a steam engine right, that could change the continuous power. Both of these early designs were primarily used to help water. The Newcomen engine was significantly more powerful and replaced a team of 500 horses that had been used to pump water out of a mine. It would take decades, however, for these machines to be considerably improved. In 1759, the Newcomen engine came to the attention of James Watt, a Scottish inventor and mechanical engineer who had made a living fixing and making scientific and musical instruments in Glasgow, Scotland. Watt was born in 1736 and, though sickly as a child, showed an aptitude for math. He learned to repair and make instruments like sextants, compasses, and barometers. He found employment at the University of Glasgow. He also started a business building musical instruments and toys. There is a popular story that Watt was inspired to investigate steam after seeing a kettle boil and steam lift the kettle's lid. The story has been told in a variety of forms, none of which are probably strictly true. Still, while he was not inspired by a boiling kettle, he did conduct many laboratory experiments that did include the use of a kettle to create steam. Watt came to understand the rules of thermodynamics, a field that would not be formalized for another century. A friend seems to have brought the steam engine to his attention when he suggested that a steam engine could be used to significantly increase the engine's efficiency. The Newcomen engine had a single piston that was alternatively heated and then cooled, which was the significant portion of the machine's potential. His innovation was to add a separate chamber called a condenser, which steam could condense, which massively improved efficiency. Later, he was also able to make another significant innovation by using a sun and planet gear system to allow his engines to make rotary motions, allowing steam engines to spin wheels. Despite his talent for inventing, it took him years to realize any financial gain from his work. His research left him in near poverty and spent years in the 1760s borrowing money and working as a civil engineer. At one point, he so despaired of success that he wrote, Of all things in life, there is nothing more foolish than inventing. Probably the majority of inventors have been led to the same opinion by their own experiences. By 1768, he created a working model. I have Dan Pepper here. The effect remained with us today. The spinning journey was created in the small village of Stanley. Harvey's was married with 11 children. He and his neighbors made a precarious living weaving cloths, clothiers, and blackburn. Harvey's operated a hand loom like this one. In another part of the cottage, his wife or children would spin the thread needed to feed the hand loom. The children would also be employed preparing the raw cotton on carding paddles separating it to use on the spinning wheel. The problem was that the process of carding and then spinning the cotton on a single spindle meant that the weaver could not always receive enough thread. Often hanging weavers would have to travel out each day to buy spun thread from other suppliers around Stanhill. This was both costly and time consuming. This was made more problematic by the introduction of the flying shuttle, which speeded up the weaving process even more. A number of attempts had been made to provide a solution. In 1761, the Society of Arts also offered a prize for an invention that could spin six threads at once, but without success. Hargreaves solved this problem by inventing a machine that could operate eight spindles at once. This immediately increased the supply of thread to the loom and boosted cloth production. Legend has it that the design occurred to him when a conventional spinning wheel was knocked over and kept revolving with the thread still retained in the spinner's hand. Right, um, we'll show you Thế thì còn à, phương pháp luyện sắc hành thép của hai xe mai à, Xíu nữa mình sẽ nên nghiên cứu nha Rồi à, à, đường từ tử anh thì các hàng công nghiệp đã là sang nước khác Ở nước Pháp thì người ta bắt đầu sử dụng những cái máy hơi nước của xe quát Mà nước Pháp người ta dùng máy hơi nước của xe quát Để làm ra mà thép đúng không ạ? Thép 
ở Mỹ ở Anh thì nhờ cái máy hơi nước của Jemwat thì người ta đã phát minh ra máy tỉa hạt bông mà máy giặt cơ khí mà cũng giặt cơ khí máy trồng các loại bông tốt có luôn và từ cái máy đó người ta cũng chế ra cái mã là mã mọt mã mọt trong hiện 838 của Samuel Mọt đây, đây là máy giặt cơ khí của Macomix và chúng ta cũng thử nghiên cứu xem cái 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 thực luận gốc của Henry Cox thế nào nhỉ? Welcome back to our journey through the groundbreaking era of the Industrial Revolution, a period of profound change and innovation spanning from Samuel Crompton's mule spinning machine, unveiled in 1779. This remarkable invention, combining the spinning gen by outdated methods and materials. Amidst this backdrop, Henry Court emerged as a visionary, ready to transform the industry with his puddling process. Before Court's groundbreaking innovation, Iron production was heavily reliant on charcoal, a resource that was becoming increasingly scarce and expensive. The quality of iron varied significantly, posing limitations for its use in machinery and large-scale construction. In this episode, we will explore how Henry Court's ingenious method, utilizing coke rather than charcoal, revolutionized iron production. His puddling process didn't just improve the quality of iron, it streamlined the entire production process, marking a pivotal moment in the Industrial Revolution. Join us as we delve into the heart of the iron industry during the Industrial Revolution, uncovering the story of the puddling process and its indispensable role in shaping the industrial world. Henry Court was born in 1740 in Lancaster, England. Little is documented about his immediate family's background, including the wealth or status of his family. However, it's known that during the 18th century, which might have influenced Court's early exposure to trade and industry. Why you? Đây, cho luôn. Đây, để cái bả. Đây, 
Shamem. In 1838, the U.S. government had issued a challenge. Anyone coming up with a semaphore system to allow communication all along the eastern seaboard would be given $30,000 to implement it. That's just over a million dollars in today's money. They did not envision a system that would use the new technology, electricity. Sam Morris, though, he assembled an all-star team to work on the project. And they started building on the remote bell ringing of Joseph Henry to develop the telegraph. And Industrial Revolution, 18th to 19th century. The economic developments of the 1800s saw the development of agrarian and handicraft economies in Europe and America transform into industrial urbanized ones. The term to describe this phenomenon would be known as the Industrial Revolution and was first used by French writers but made popular by English economic historian Arnold Toynbee. The Industrial Revolution was underpinned by the Agricultural Revolution. From the mid-18th century to the mid-19th century, agricultural production increased significantly. The huge increase in food output supported the expansion and sustained a large population and boosted trade. The increased use of machines over human or animal power in farming also meant that less farm workers were needed and they could leave the land to industrial towns. Better metals and richer fuel also contributed to industrialization by creating the steam engine, an integral machine to industrialization which powered factories, locomotives and ships. The new steam engines used coal and iron, both in their construction and as fuel, increasing demand for these resources. Roads, canals and railways changed Britain dramatically, connecting Britain and allowing goods to be sent over long distances. Visually, the revolution was clear in the new industrial towns, with smoking factories dominating the skyline. The cities were horrible to live in, overcrowded and dirty with dangerous conditions in the factories and strict rules and punishments. The Industrial Revolution saw mechanization in factories of the textile industry, which was previously manufactured in the home, creating the term cottage industry. Now, production could be increased on a large scale because of new inventions such as the spinning mule and the power loom. The iron industry developed with Henry Bessemer's inexpensive process for mass-producing steel. Iron and steel were key materials for constructing the tools and machinery, steam engines and ships needed for the industrial progress. Industrial labor opportunities drew people to the cities from the countryside, to such an extent that in 1750 only 15% of the population of Britain lived in towns. By 1850, over 50% of the entire population of Great Britain lived in either a town or a city, and by 1900, it was 85%. London had 4.5 million people, 
Glasgow, 760,000. Liverpool, 685,000, and Manchester and Birmingham. Five hundred thousand. Great Britain was the birthplace of the Industrial Revolution and was the only mature industrial economy for a long time. Historians have speculated that this was because, as an island, there was relative peace and stability for Britain compared to mainland Europe. Rather than spending on a large defensive standing army, capital could be spent on other ventures and there was confidence for investors. Native resources were also abundant and readily available for initial technological developments and inventions. Engineers and inventors were also respected and encouraged in British society and were backed by wealthy patrons. A powerful navy and an empire bringing in vast wealth from its colonies also contributed to the catalyst for industrialization before others. Nevertheless, Germany, France, Switzerland, Belgium and the United States soon emulated Britain's industrial change and by 1900, Britain would no longer be at the top, with the United States as the world's leading industrial nation in the 20th century. Subscribe for more history videos.